So eighth graders, it's Mrs. Thompson. We're going to start section 6.2 today, and this will be example one. We're going to, throughout the whole section of 6.2, we're going to learn how to evaluate and simplify expressions containing rational exponents. So in case you were wondering what a rational exponent is, think in terms of the exponent be becoming a fraction, okay? Um, that's what we're going to focus in on today. We're used to seeing exponents that are whole numbers or negative numbers or zero. Those are integers. Um, we're going to actually see fraction exponents today, and I just want to take some time and, and teach you how what that looks like and how do you do it in your calculator, et cetera, and so forth, okay? Let's start right here with parts of a radical, okay? Now, the whole thing is a radical, Okay, the whole thing. The, there's a number that's in the crook of this elbow here, okay? And that number that's there is called the index, okay? And if it's the number two, you don't typically see that. So if you happen to see a blank or an open spot in the crook of that elbow, like it just says, What's the square root of 25? That's how you would read this one that I just wrote here. It is understood that there's a 2 there. It's understood because it's square root, and square is the number 2, okay? We don't typically write that when we're doing square roots. We don't write the number 2. So if you happen to see a radical with no number indicated for the index, it is an understood 2. 100% of the time, okay? So this one actually has a number there. It's a three. So we'd say, we would call this the cube root because cube in math indicates three. Square means two, cube means three. Okay, and I'll write that off to the side here. Square means two, cube root means three. Three. And then everything else after that, if it's another number, then it would be a fourth root, a fifth root, a sixth root, a seventh root, etc. and so forth. They don't have special names, just square and cube. Okay? Now, this big check mark sign right here, that is the radical symbol. That's the check mark sign that indicates please take the root of this. Could be a square root, a cube root, fourth root, whatever. And the number underneath. The radical symbol is called the radicand, okay? So that's the parts of a radical. The three most important things that we're going to need today are the radicand, so that's the number underneath the radical. The index, that's going to be the number in the crook of the elbow of that root sign. And then the exponent, if there is one, outside of the radical. Now, if you look at this particular radical, radical come back up here to the top you don't see an exponent out here or on the 27 so it's an understood one okay now what i did down here at the bottom of your page is i wrote several um, radicals here i did the square root of three the cube root of three the uh, fourth root of three fifth root of three sixth root of three seventh root of three and uh, etc and so on okay i wanted to show you how radicals can be written another way, totally removing the radical altogether. If you see a radical, that all that means is the number underneath is being raised to a fraction exponent. That is all a radical indicates. It's a fraction exponent. So let me just take an example. Let me take this very first one, the square root of 3. Okay, You're going to take your base of 3, that radicand, and it's going to come out from underneath the square root sign, okay? Then the exponent on the 3, which is a 1, because we don't see an exponent on the 3, is your numerator, and the number in the crook of the elbow becomes your denominator. So the square root of 3 is really 3 to the 1 half. The cube root of 3 is really 3 to the 1 third. The fourth root of three is really three to the one fourth power. Do you see the pattern here? I'm taking the base out. The exponent is my numerator. The index is my denominator. Radicand is my, is my base. 
and then the exponent on the three is a understood one, and the six is my index, and that is my denominator. This becomes three to the one seventh, and this becomes three to the one eighth power. Okay, so really all I was trying to show you in this exercise here at the bottom is that the radical itself is really another way of writing a fraction exponent. That's really all it is. Now, the very bottom row, I just wanted to remind you, I think we talked about this a while back, but I want to refresh your memory. If the exponent on your uh, number underneath the sign, the symbol here, is the same as your index, they cancel each other out, leaving you a three. So three to the third power cancels out with the cube root, leaving you a three. Fourth power cancels out with a fourth root, leaving you a three. Whatever, um, if the exponent and the index are the same number, they cancel each other out. That's what happens. So every one of these is going to end up being just plain old three because the exponent and the index are the same number. And, and that root and that exponent cancel each other out. That is truth. And I just wanted to show you that shortcut. All right, let's flip to our next page because I wanted to show you example one. Now that we understand a little bit more about, you know, what, what this means, They've given you the, the base, 125, and they said raise it to the one-third power. Now, let me just kind of take you on an aside really quick. Uh, really, 125 raised to the one-third power. Remember what I told you? The 125 is the radicand under that root sign. The 1 is the exponent on the 125. And the 3, the denominator, is the index underneath. Okay, so that's really all it is. It's, it, it's a radical. It's a cube root. They're asking us to find the cube root of 125. That's really all that's going on here. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to switch over to my camera now because I want you guys to see um, using a calculator what this looks like. So the first thing I need you to turn your calculator on. I left my, my fancy one at home, the one I always use, and I never let you guys use. I left that one at home. I'm here by myself on a teacher work day, so go me. And um, I, I just borrowed one out of the bucket. So a lot of you have the TI-83 pluses. Um, the key, the keying sequence is the same on the TI-84s as well, okay? So let me just show you how to do both a cube root in your calculator and how to raise uh, 125 to the one-third power. And you can see I've got it right here in your book. That's what we're looking at right here, okay? Now, let's do the cube root really quick. I just want to show you what that looks like. If you go to your math button, okay, press that, and then do you see number four? Just arrow down or press the number four, and you see there's the cube root. There's a square root sign, and there's a three beside it. That means we want to take the cube root. So press enter, and on your calculator screen, you should see the cube root, and then in parentheses, we're going to punch in our number, 125, and I'm going to go ahead and put my other parentheses there. And so I'm asking the calculator to please tell me what the cube root of 125 is. Press enter, and it's exactly five, okay? So what it's asking me is what number times itself three times will give me 125? And five is the answer. Five times five times five is 125. So yeah, that's the number that I multiplied to itself three times to get 125. So I'm reversing that process and asking so what was the original number that I multiplied to itself three times to give me 125? That's what the cube root of 125 is asking, okay? Now, secondly, let's plug in the fraction exponent. Let me show you what that looks like. So we're going to take the 125, that's our base, okay? See it in your book, my book? We're going to write our base, type it in. And then I'm going to use, remember that roof sign? We're going to raise it, raise the roof, remember? Raise it, 
and in parentheses, I'm going to type in the fraction one-third and just do one divided by three. So that's the way that I type it into the calculator. I'm telling the calculator, here's my base, 125, and I want you to raise it to this fraction, and I'm going to put that fraction in parentheses. That is the correct way to do it. And then press enter. Whoops, looky there. It worked out, didn't it? So two ways to write that thing. You can turn it back into its radical form. I do not recommend that. I just wanted to show you how to do it that way. Or just take the base and raise it to that exponent. Okay, so let me flip back to our, our notes here. And when we did our keying sequence, this is a lot of this you can just do right in your calculator. You're going to get exactly 5. Okay, so 9 raised to the 1 half. And I'm just going to continue to go back and forth showing you how, it, how you can put it into the calculator. You can put it in exactly like this into your calculator that'll work it'll get you the answer or you can turn it into its radical form which is oh the square root of nine well everybody knows what the square root of nine is that's three okay either way you're going to get three out of that okay um 16 raised to the one fourth power you can take 16 raise the root put the fraction in parentheses or you can say, hey, I'm trying to find the fourth root of 16. In other words, what number times itself four times is going to give me 16? And you're right. If you thought two, you're absolutely correct. Two times two is four. Four times that third two is eight. And eight times that fourth two is 16. So yes, two is the answer. Okay. So hopefully I've done a good job in, explain, in explaining the keying process. Now what I want to do is I want to take, um, I'm going to look at letter D here on our, on our notes, and I want to go back to camera mode, and I want to show you how to put that back into the camera, or into your calculator. So let's clear out that information. I'm actually in letter B in your book. But it's, uh, I wrote it as letter D on your notes, so it doesn't matter. And this is how you'd write it all in one sentence, okay? You would do 64, there's your base, raise it, use your roof, and put parentheses, 1 divided by 6, okay? So there's the first part, then hit your plus sign. And then we're going to do 25, raise parentheses to the one half power and then hit enter and you see you got exactly seven and that's what you should have gotten okay that's what it should be 64 raised to the one sixth is actually the number two and 25 raised to the one half is really the square root of 25 which is five and two plus five is seven and so that's that's why that works out the way that it does Okay, I'm going to flip back to your notes now, and let's take a look, and we've got the sixth root of 64 plus the square root of 25. You may not know what the sixth root of 64 is right off the top of your head, but it is two. You can plug that into your calculator as 64 raised to the one six, and two plus five is seven, so that's exactly right. I would put this in your calculator just like this, just like I was showing you, and you'll get 7 out of that. Either way, either way, you'll get 7 out of that, okay? And so you can do the same thing for E and the same thing for F and come up with those answers and, and see what you get. So I'm going to save these. These are going to be special ones. These are going to be bonuses for you. I want you to try those. I showed you how to key them in. I bet you know how to do it. You've already done it now. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you understood example one.